Hi, it's Dennis Daly. Many years ago, I interviewed a very amazing woman. Her name, odd as it sounds, is Dillis Evans, D-I-L-Y-S, Dillis Evans. She wrote a great book called Monster Soup. She thinks young people simply don't exercise their imagination enough. And she wrote the book to help them do just that. Children are very smart and logical, but I think that what I fear most that their imaginative sides of their lives are not being fed as much as they should be as young children. So I'm all for fantasy and imagination, and I think that the reality of life is, is very much with us all the time. You know, when you run into a dull adult, you wonder if he or she really had a dull childhood. If, if anything, <laughs> my childhood was too inventive because it probably wouldn't surprise a lot of my friends if they knew that I had an imaginary playmate when I was growing up. My mother and I still talk about it, and I used to blame him for everything I did wrong. <laughs> no, I understand that. I, I, one of my artist's mothers actually had a friend called Nobody, and when um, uh, she was asked by her mother who did that, she would reply, um, Nobody did it. Meaning her friend did it, but she certainly didn't do it. And so um, children invent characters and buddies for all kinds of reasons. And uh, I think that's one of the signs of a creative child. My mother tells me that my, my, my imaginary playmate was named Mr. Pups, and I don't know why. <laughs> it might have been Freudian because I was terrified of dogs when I was growing up. But my mother tells me that I used to have to have a place set at the table. It was very a la Harvey, the kind of, <laughs> kind of character. But that I came in one day and I chided my mother for having a place set. And my mother said, oh, but Mr. Pup sits there. And I said, <laughs> and I don't know how old I was. I said, Mom, Mr. Pups is dead. And she said, what happened? And, and I, in my three-year-old or four-year-old wisdom at the time, said, there's been a horrible blimp accident. So I guess I had seen a, a newsreel retrospective on the Hindenburg or I think something. You must have. I think you must have. You see, I don't, I, don't, uh, I don't fear for your imagination as a child. I think you were extremely active. And that I think a lot of children don't have that nowadays. And I, and I think that maybe you were exposed to things where that was able to happen. And a lot of children come from environments where it's almost impossible to get that kind of um, freedom of, of thought. I mean, they're too busy trying to figure out how to keep warm and eat and get to school and, and dodge bullets and on the dodge way. dodge bullets on the way. And so anything that we can do to give them a little fantasy in their lives, um, I think the best, the better it is. Dillis, we cannot show it on radio, but there are some gorgeous illustrations in the book. Can you tell us who did them and, and how they were chosen? Yes. Um, well, this the book came about because uh, one of my illustrators, Jacqueline Rogers, uh, when she was a child, loved drawing monsters. And although she had done five or six other children's picture books by this time, she'd never had an opportunity opportunity to do a book with monsters in it. And as we didn't seem to be able to conjure one up, um, I decided to put together a group of poems written by different poets at different times uh, that related to the idea of a monster and what a monster is. And um, as I think I said earlier, that the monster that I decided to, to talk about would be in many different forms. The monster is a young boy in Wellington boots splashing through a puddle is a monster to the eight little creatures underneath his, his feet. And um, the power shovel, which is an inanimate object, is a monster uh, in and of itself, rather like a dinosaur. And then a dinosaur, which kids absolutely kids love dinosaurs so when i started to think dinosaurs i thought well i'll put in a real poem about a, a real dinosaur and i'll put in a poem about um the power shovel by rowena bennett which looks like a dinosaur and is actually a mechanical um piece of equipment and bright yellow and snorts and digs holes in the ground and spits out dirt and really is a good uh, is a good illustration well, now, you are a rather complex person. Here you are, uh, having put together this book. You are an artist. You've taught art. You've put together collections. But I understand from what I read that maybe your great love of children stems from your first avocation. You were trained as a nurse. <laughs> yes, I, I was trained as a nurse. That was um, uh, my, uh, my reading in a newspaper one day that um, English nurses were wanted in America, full, full passage paid, and one year's... Uh, uh, visitors exchange visa and I always wanted to go to art school um, in America and this was some kind of a dream and I thought well if I become a nurse I can go to America and I can go to art school and uh, put myself through school by nursing during the day and going to art school at night and in fact that's what I did. 
and then I changed professions completely and, and became um, involved in children's book illustration and also in the world of um, exhibitions and putting on exhibitions that um, feature the best of children's book illustration. What is the reward for compiling, and I don't mean monetary here, for compiling books and I'm sure you've had the opportunity to see the reaction of children when they either read these or have them read to them. What's it feel like to know that you've, you've gathered this genre together and, and put it together in a presentable sort of way, that it, it moves children and has an effect on them? Well, it, it sort of makes me... It makes me smile. I, I just uh, feel really happy about it because it's it's something that I was nervous about doing. In fact, when I when I put the first when I put the collection together, I took them into um, my editor Burnett Ford and said um, I had this idea. You know, why don't you get one of your compilers? You know, because there are, there are professional compilers with with very good reputations. Why don't you have one of them put together a group of poems like these and um, make make it become a book? And then Jackie can do her monster. And so as I was looking at some proofs, she quietly told me to, you, you, you check the proofs, let me look at the poems. And she looked at the poems, and after a few minutes she said, uh, we have a compiler. And I said, terrific, uh, who? And she said, you. And I said, no, I'm not a compiler. I'm a <laughs> so that's how the book started. And then she said, you just go back to work and you find some more poems. Let's discuss it. Think of a concept. Um, and she really sort of led me through it and um, helped me think in terms of how to select them and put them together. And then the rest, I must say, seemed very easy to me, and uh, I enjoy doing it immensely. Well, there's so many, so many wonderful visions that can be conjured up. I was looking through some of the literature of a dragon that toasts bread with its breath. That's right. <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about that? We have a couple, three minutes remaining. Why don't you pick some, some nice, creepy, crawly things you can read to us? Okay, I'll do that. I'll start with this one, um, where there's this dragon, and he's toasting uh, pieces of bread on the end of a sword held by a young girl in a knight's helmet, and it's called The Toaster by William J. Smith. A silver-scaled dragon with jaws flaming red sits at my elbow and toasts my bread. I hand him fat slices, and then, one by one, he hands them back when he sees they are done. And there's a little table with um, uh, a couple of little mice and a knife and fork sort of looking at these overburned uh, pieces of toast with this funny look on their faces. So it's a very funny little poem. Well, and it's short, too. I mean, it's short. To me, the magic of a lot of children's poems and literature is that it does not demand a long attention span, which most children don't have. I mean, my goodness, exactly. have a, even if a four-year-old child were literate, would he or she want to sit down and read all of John Brown's body? You exactly. know, I mean, there's, well, there's, there's a point there. That's why these poems are, are scaled that way. There are some very short ones, and even the longest ones are fairly simple. And there are a couple of short ones that are put together, but they stop at the end of each paragraph so that there's a, a change in pace and a change in, in the visual. How about a few more here? Okay. Um, there's the one called Giant by Elizabeth Sawyer. One foot in the river, one foot in the lake. What wonderful strides a giant can take. The water goes squish when he wiggles his toes. Oh, giants have fun, as anyone knows. His red rubber boots reach up to his knee. Why, puddles are nothing to giants like me. And of course, that's a small boy. And, and then, something else, too, I, I would presume happens, is that you're actually giving fuel to children's imagination, but also giving them fuel for things they can play, act, and do themselves. Yes, I think so. A lot of these poems can be played out, and uh, especially some of the, the uh, shorter ones. And uh, I think what I, I, sh I think I should read a, a, a poem called A Bunch of Poems and Verses by Beatrice Schenk de Renier. Okay. And they're three little poems. Monsters. Monsters do not scare me much, nor do goblins and ghosts and all such. But on Halloween night, please hold my hand tight. I don't want to be out of touch. And short but sweet. Short but sweet. And then there's one called Scare Me Easy. Scare me easy, scare me slow, scare me gentle, don't let go my hand. And then there's one called I Like Fall. I like winter, spring, summer, and fall. In the fall, I like fall best of all. What I like most is, a witch or a ghost is, quite likely to pay me a call. I was just thinking I should say, Dillis Evans has been our guest. I wish she'd had time to read the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Only that's not scary. What is scary is that the clock moves so quickly. 
Dillis has joined us from our New York City studios. Again, give us the name of the book and, and where it's available, and it's it's basically for young preschool children, but uh, it, certainly it's something that can be read even to uh, toddlers and, and have them enjoy the whole concept of being scared. And do it, well, I was going to say read it do with it the lights it. out, but that might be tough to do. <laughs> read it by candlelight. It's a monster soup and other spooky poems illustrated by Jackie Rogers, compiled by Dillis Evans, and it's a Scholastic uh, Inc. book published by Scholastic Hardcover. And any bookstore, if they don't have it around Halloween time, would be very um, easy to order it through your local bookstore. It's a scary read. If you're four or five years old, of course I haven't read it. I'm Dennis Daly.